to test Einstein's field theory as part of the Manhattan Project. At the time, nobody knew his theory was incomplete. Without Heisenberg's uncertainty principles, everybody in 1943 believed Einstein, especially the army and the navy. Maybe they wanted a ship to deliver a nuclear weapon that would be invisible. Maybe the idea was to deliver nuclear torpedoes with an invisible ship or sub. The whole thing never happened and the evidence is there that something did happen. But not what we think happened. Some things are better left unsaid. And that is that everything that they say about the Philadelphia experiment is a lie because everything has to be a little bit true. That is the anatomy of a lie. And it is true Einstein worked for the Navy, and it is true he was completing his unified field theory, and that it has to do with electromagnetism and gravity, which are the two mainstays of the experiment. What is true is that the experiment took place in a shipyard before the Eldridge was commissioned. And it's even possible for there to be a skeleton crew that was put together just for this purpose. It seems they would have chosen sailors as you would choose astronauts. They would have been expecting something to happen, and they were not expecting something to happen. And it may be the case that they were surprised by Einstein knew what the result would be. We have moved on from believing any old lie, but not as far as we need to because telling lies is what they do, and you have to be on your guard. The crew were never heard from again, so they were not the present crew of the Eldridge who are in the media. But they were all declared missing in action. And what you would only need to check the files for missing in action, to see if any names appeared were familiar. But the thing is, we don't know who they were, and maybe we will never know. It is classified that they died in mental hospitals, and only one has ever lived to tell his story. And he was on board another ship. So we are supposed to believe that they were 100% effective in covering up the experiment and preventing the sailors from talking about their experience. Maybe enough money was spent to keep it a secret. Maybe you would have to spend a billion to keep a secret like that. Maybe, with all the media interest, you would think that they would have gotten one interview with one sailor who took part in the experiment. But there is not one interview, not one primary source document, except the log of the Eldridge, which may or may not be missing pages depending on who you talk to. Light can have a wavelength as big as the universe, which could explain dark energy and magnetic fields around black holes and in empty space. Light can have wavelengths we cannot detect according to Maxwell's theory. Maybe this could explain the Philadelphia experiment. Maybe we could have known about these other frequencies. Maybe we could have known about these other frequencies of light since 1943. The greatest disappearing act ever was the sailors that took part in the experiment. They were declared missing in action, and that's what their relatives were told. And it doesn't sound true, and it's not true. Why did the families of the sailors not ask questions about their relatives, particularly when the experiment became public? Where are the families, and why are they not suing this government for compensation? If it doesn't sound true, then it's not true, says Judge Judy, and I think she would rule that the Philadelphia experiment never happened. If you don't believe this, you can ask her. It was all bogus, it was all disinformation to do with war, and never really happened. But that is not a way to end a prize-winning essay. This is how to end it. That's all I have to say about that. I'm going to call a lawyer and organise a class action to sue the US government on behalf of survivors of the Philadelphia experiment. Please come forward and get your settlement. So there is no way to be honest. And admit I can't write this book because there is nothing to say. All of the technology is a delusion and not quite. I think of how a magnet can transfer magnetism to a steel object. And if magnetism can be transferred, then a ship can be transferred in time-space. It can absorb radiation and become a magnetic field. And of course, 
this is just nonsense. But aliens soon learn E equals MC squared and they blow themselves up and maybe this secret is so serious that it has to be kept by any means because it could destroy all life on Earth. And that it's an interesting hypothesis but just who has the secret of destroying all life on Earth and just who is keeping these secrets. E equals mc squared leads to the atomic bomb, at least we believe it does, but the equation is not complete without momentum, so mass has to be in motion at the speed of light. That sounds very similar to the Philadelphia experiment, the mass being the ship which travelled to Norfolk at the speed of light, or instantaneously. And if it travelled faster than light, that would be the secret that would have to be kept. But it's very unlikely that we could keep a secret of faster than light travel, or ships that travel at the speed of light. But there are thousands of UFOs that are not explained according to Project Blue Book. If these are not alien spaceships, then there is a secret space program that explores the cosmos. And that makes sense to UFO buffs. That is why there is a huttle was retired, because they knew they would not need it. Then they waste billions on old technology when they already have Star Trek style technology. That is highly unlikely and that is what we find when we test to see if it makes sense, it does not make sense and it is not true. So UFOs either are alien spacecraft or spacecraft from our future or they do not exist. Could the Philadelphia experiment have made contact with ET? And that is a possibility as long as you don't think of an alien. And that is a possibility as long as you don't think of an alien coming out of a vortex and eating people. This seems so ridiculous and so unlikely that people immediately distance themselves from it. But what if the Philadelphia experiments discovered other dimensions, even universes? Again, who would keep the secret and how would it be done? In space, infinite, and we can travel an infinite distance. If we can, it is one hell of a secret that it has to be kept for 60 years. But what if they don't know what went right and they can't repeat the experiment? Then it's like cold fusion. The results are reported, but it's an accident that cannot be repeated. And that, of course, is not science. And there are always observations that do not fit into the theory and they are disregarded and maybe the Philadelphia experiment is disregarded because it does not fit the theory. And that makes sense and could be true. That they observe something usual and could never be repeated, except with advanced alien technology, which does not exist because we are not in touch with aliens in other universes or dimensions. A wormhole would have a feedback loop that would presumably destroy the wormhole, a relief for historians as Hawking is quoted, but a disappointment to dinosaur hunters and a space-time tunnel between Philadelphia and Norfolk, or such as described in Muntalk, New York, a seaside resort, with the oldest cattle ranch in America. Maybe a great white shark would be more possible in Montauk, New York than a time-space wormhole, but I have a recipe for a wormhole, a thought experiment based on Newton's clock. Newton's clock converts a circular Earth orbit of 360 days slash degrees in 10 large spatial dimensions to an elliptical Earth orbit of 365 days in 3D plus 1 of time. An elliptical orbit has to be in three large spatial dimensions, but you can reverse the equation to describe Newton's and Einstein's equations together for an elliptical Earth orbit with a difference of six minutes approximately side real time, which is the correction when converting from a perfect circle. Reverse the equation and you get Einstein's equation expressed in terms of 10 large spatial dimensions of string theory, but of course string theory is 10 spatial dimensions curled up. So we imagine 10 large spatial dimensions in a contracting universe. Reverse the equation and you get Einstein's equation expressed in terms of 10 large spatial dimensions of string theory, but of course string theory is 10 spatial dimensions curled up. So we imagine 10 large spatial dimensions 
in a contracting universe.